the new channel. See the new. The new channel. See the new. The views, opinions, and insights expressed in the following show are those of the hosts, producers, guests, and viewers. They do not necessarily reflect the position of the channel. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome, welcome to the new channel. Here to help you see the new you. Magandang tanghali po. Maray na pangungtuan. Masayang panangalian. This is Jesse Francis Rebostillo, your host in the HR Hotline. Welcome back to the HR Hotline. This is a wonderful day. We have a very special guest. And our topic is really something wonderful. It's responsive legislations for human resources. Let us start first with our first segment, which is HR, HR Insights. We well, Let us start with that paradigm, that perspective on HR, which is the defensive and offensive HR. We'll talk about offensive HR later on this session. And what are the A's of offensive HR? It is actually availability, adaptability, and alignment. Now, today, we're going to talk about the defensive HR. What is that? This is about your controls, consistency, and specifically for today, compliance. Dave Ulrich shared with us that one of the HR competencies is to be a compliance manager. We have to comply with what? With the law. Be you are the HR, CHRO, or the HR assistant, you have to be aligned and you have to be consistent with the law. Now, if you've read the Teaser, we are actually basing what we are doing now with a more than 40 year old labor code. I am one of those lucky, lucky guys. When I joined government in 1977 with Salvador Badon, the then Salvador Badon, at Overseas Employment Development Board. Nitoy Roque is a shipmate of mine. We were given three years old pa lang yung ano, labor code. We were given first hand, first hand 
onboarding orientations by the author himself. The wonderful blast of bliss. Now, ang tagal na. And sometimes, we as HR, we complain a lot. We complain a lot that the, that the laws are not responsive anymore. So today, let us be Mary's rather than Martha. And what do I mean? It's biblical. Let us go out of what we are doing and let us just listen to an authority to tell us what are really being prepared for us by the legislators. And we should be aware, appraised, apprised, and updated with that. If you are a member of the People Management Association of the Philippines, for the longest time, we have been engaged with that. I, for one, I am not a lawyer. What, what is the committee that I am with? The Labor Relations, the Industry Relations Committee. Because I would like to be in the know. And what do we talk? Ka Efren Alberto from Baguio also. Attorney Noel Valsicas, Attorney Randall Tabayoyong, Attorney John Suniga, our guest earlier, Attorney Wins. We look into what are the legislations being sponsored in Congress, being discussed in Congress, so that we will know, we will have a hand when they are already made into law. Or if not, it is already a law into the IRR. So we have to look into that. As an HR, we bring, we bring what is happening outside to our organizations and we are also responsible of shouting out not ranting shouting out magpasaring magpasabi so you have to join surveys you have to join polls you have to be a member of an association you have to be heard or if you know our proper representative in the congress you have to tell us what is it that we want so that these laws later on are the things that we have to abide. Importante po yun na as an HR, para bang ngayon, para bang ako itatanong ko yan. I for one, I am now retired and I am now in the gig economy. I am a freelance. I'm a freelance uh HR consultant, I'm a freelance training consultant. I just read through ECOP, through the Employers Confederation of the Philippines. There is, I will ask that later on, there is a law in Congress, a, 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 a bill in Congress, it's not yet a law. On the gigil, gigil, on the gig economy of labor. So I will be affected. So I have to know that. I have to know that. So, importante po yung kasi I started with compliance. I started with compliance. We have to comply with the laws. And we have to appreciate the spirit of the law. What is behind it. And now, some of us are already complaining that it has been a 46 years old legislation that we're following, a code that we're following. And now some of us are complaining because we are transitioning into the new normal. So I ask all of you, and for those who are listeners, you share this later on. Let us hear from our representative in Congress. So with this, I'll cut short my HR insights and let's have the announcements first before we have a conversation with our special guest. So let's have the announcements. Okay. Can we have the announcements, please? 
a few break before we start with a longer segment, which is the conversation. So happy this morning, uh, past president of PMAP, Obed Policarpio, is watching, and he, he he posted that he would like to send his warm hugs and greetings to our special guest. We have uh, Donald watching from Saudi. We have Christy watching from Naga. We have Rina, a PAPS member, watching us. Also, Olin and uh, Edgar Franco of the Philippine Society of Talent Development. And uh, we have Pearly Mangkoy of PMAP. Ayan. Hello, thank you for watching. And I'm very sure later on they will share this. Now, our special guest is a wonderful person. I, you, you, I know, gracioso, gracioso. To think, to think that he graduated from UP, huh? He graduated. Always an honor student, honor student. Then in 1990, he was the PMAP Personnel Manager of the Year. In 2007, kaya kahit anong oras na tumawag ako so, pupunta yan, hindi yan alam ng iba. I was a member of the Board of Trustee in PMAP and he was the president. And then yon. Mayroon, from that, mayroon na kaming connection. Kung mayroon siyang igustong ipapasa, tumingin lang niya sa akin, ako na yung magsasabing, I second the motion. <laughs> oh, that's a job. Pero ito yan. Basta tumingin na sa akin yung president na, na yan, ako na magsasabi, I second the motion. I can still remember that. Kasi siyempre kung mayroon mga deliberation sa board, siyempre, ganun. Then, you know, he's a businessman. Every time I go up to Baguio, tawagan mo lang siya, kahit siyang busy, Dadaan yan. Ako nga ang abusado. Ang dami ko ng utang dyan. I know he's, a, he's a, an owner of hotel, but he's a chairman and president of, I don't know if I can pronounce it properly, Berkeley. Berkeley School in Baguio. Now, ang ganda, sana sinunod ko yung kanyang career path eh. From a people manager of the year to the president of PMAP. Parang 10 years, nag-follow siya ng career path. Nag-develop siya. In 2016, 
he became the lone representative of Baguio City. And now, siya ang togo, pinapuntahan. If there is anything that you would like to be legislated on our part, parang there is a kuya, a big brother, na o covers us. So, ladies and gentlemen, let us welcome the Honorable Congressman Marquez Mark Go. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, Past President Jesse. Thank you for the invitation yes. and the opportunity to be here uh, in your very nice uh, program. And, uh, you know, we have a meeting of the Committee on uh, Labor and Employment at 1 o'clock. But I told them that I will be a little late because I have uh, sort of a conversation with uh, a, a friend. And I would not miss this opportunity to be part of his program. So uh, Yes, I, because I share I this mean, with the COPA. Yes. I uh, the... Yeah. I, I'm, I'm at really... least they can see you. Yes, uh, I, I can see you too here. And uh, definitely, I think we have a lot of things to discuss. And I yes. know that uh, we have a lot of friends who are uh, listening and watching. I, I, I heard that uh, past President Obet uh, is also watching. Yes, he's watching. Like to, uh, congratulate him also and thank him for uh, being part of this program also. Uh, and the other uh, members of PMAP. You know, uh, uh, there is always really a need to do something about our labor code. Uh, you mentioned that the labor code uh, was passed uh, in 1974 during the time yes. of uh, Secretary Blas Ople. Uh, yes. There was uh, this law, uh, PD442, uh, that enacted uh, the labor code of the Philippines in 1974. And today, it's uh, how many years? 46 years. So I think it's really important that we look at it and uh, uh, do something about it uh, as uh, uh, we see uh, the developments uh, obtaining around the world. And uh, personally, wow. I will be filing a bill that will uh, amend uh, the, uh, the labor code, come out with a new uh, labor code that will reflect the changing conditions of our country, of the world, that is uh, anchored on uh, a basic principle that uh, what we wanted there, a strong partnership between labor and management. And uh, I have asked uh, one of our past presidents to help me draft the oh. uh, proposed amendment to this labor code. We want to have an omnibus amendment of the labor code. As a matter of fact, uh, we wanted to uh, even change the title. Instead of simply Labor Code of the Philippines, it will be named as Human Capital Code of the Philippines. That will Human Capital. More Human Capital uh, Code of the Philippines. That will uh, address both concerns and uh, of labor and management. Of we course, it has to be balanced. It has to be balanced. Uh, you know, uh, Jesse, I delivered a privileged speech in Congress Last uh, 2017, during my first term in, in office. And wow. uh, the title of this bill that I delivered, I mean, this uh, privileged speech that I delivered, is uh, Change of Paradigm. Uh, oh, that, and, that, that, that is actually our point now, the Change of Paradigm. Okay, yeah, tell us about paradigm. it. Yeah, uh, as we know, uh, you know, the labor code, uh, basically, of course, we wanted to protect the rights and uh, privileges of our labor, but at the same time, we should not disregard the importance of uh, uh, the employer or uh, capital. So what we wanted to do here, instead of having a labor code that will simply focus on labor, it should bo both uh, focus on labor and capital, uh, such that uh, we can have a stronger uh, relationship between labor and capital, that the interest of labor is similar with that of the the employers or the capitalists, if you may term uh, uh, the word, uh, you know, employer to a capitalist. So this is what I wanted to do here, that the relationship should not be adversarial, 
it should be a partnership that will improve uh, productivity of uh, the company and at the same time the increase in productivity in the company will redound both to the benefit of the employers and the employees. So yeah. we will look at all the provisions of the Labor Code starting from Book 1 up to Book 7 uh, of the Labor Code uh, so that we can really have uh, a total, you know, uh, I would say uh, a comprehensive and uh, total uh, uh, change uh, for the betterment of our country. Uh, for and, one... Uh, as, you said, as you said... Uh, for for one yes. congressman, for one congressman, the security of tenure is not included in the existing labor code. The one that oh. is very controversial now, which is the security of the contractors. It's not actually the security of tenure bill. Uh, it's well, not it is stated under Article 106 that uh, labor only contracting is uh, prohibited by law. What is allowed is only job contracting. Uh, yes, so yes. this is a provision that we have to relook at uh, in answer to the uh, growing concerns of uh, so many, not only uh, uh, employers, but even employees. Uh, and at the same time, uh, in consideration, of course, of what is happening around the world. Uh, oh, so which is the new ways of doing work. Yes. The, the gig economy with the freelance like me. Yes. Uh, that should already right. be considered. Yes, uh, that's that's very important. Uh, you mga uh, freelancers, uh, we have a lot of them: uh, artists, uh, media people. Uh, we have uh, you know ordinary Trainers. individuals who, who who really are doing their own business, uh, serving different organizations, but on a uh, freelance uh, mode. No, so I think this is one thing that we have to incorporate in the provisions of the labor code. Plus, uh, of course, uh, one uh, item that I have filed in Congress uh, and we'd like to incorporate this in this omnibus amendment to the Labor Code is the principle of coming out with new work arrangements that will be both favorable uh, to employees and uh, employers. Yes, especially now that we're having the pandemic, we're actually yeah. in the alternative work arrangements and that cannot be found in the code. That cannot yes. be found in the code. That's right. Uh, under Articles 83, 87, and 91, yung Article 83 of the Labor Code says that the work hours per day is eight hours. Under Article 87, that if you exceed eight hours working, you will be paid overtime. And that after working uh, six days, you will be given one rest day. So these are Articles 83, 87, 81. What we would like I know, to I know you have a pending bill on that. What happened yes, to the? No, no. Can you tell us? Yeah, please, uh, please. Actually, please. What, what I wanted here is uh, come out with a new work arrangement where companies would be allowed to compress their work days from six days to four days or five days. Oh, uh, oh, oh, and, oh. Uh, let the employees uh, work and the company in general work uh, more than eight hours. Uh, but on a shorter work week. Uh, let's say if you are working now, uh, say, let's say five days, 40 hours per day, I mean per week, you can work, uh, you know, four days, but you work 10 days, I mean 10 hours per day. Under the bill that I proposed uh, in Congress, you will only be paid overtime even if you work 10 hours a day after working for 40 hours a week. So you compress the work days and uh, the, you spread the hours uh, to the remaining days. Uh, so in that case, if you work now five days a week at uh, eight hours a day, that's 40 hours, and you divide that by four days, so that means you work 10, day, uh, 10 hours per day but uh, you only work for four days. That would be uh, so, better for work-life integration, for shifting. Yes. That, is, that is best. That is, yes. that is actually responsive to the human resource. Yes. For and the traffic. That's part of uh, addressing the so-called work-life balance issue that is uh, being yes. uh, 
mentioned by several uh, organizations. And it will help uh, the employers as well as the employees. Uh, can you imagine that now, uh, I mean, before the pandemic, we have a little problem with the, the traffic in Metro Manila. So they work five days or even six days, and it takes longer to be able to come to work because of the traffic. So if you shorten the number of days to four days, so in effect, uh, you will be helping uh, to a certain degree. Uh, you let know, us, let us make it clear. Four days, but you are going to be in the office for 12 hours. Uh, Am I correct? Ten, ten, 10 hours per day, yes. 10 hours per day. If so that's around 40 you, hours. Yes, but this is voluntary uh, on the part of the employees and the employer. Okay, okay. So if a company finds it meaningful to them and it will help improve their operations, they can adopt a four-day work week or even a five-day work week if they are now working six days a week. Oh, so there will be alternatives. There, it is their yes. own choice. Yes. And you might have some operations in the company where you can work four days. In some areas, you might work five days. Depending and on what they, can, uh, you know. what they can do is now do the, the alternative, uh, say three or four days, and then you go, then you go work from home. Is uh, that that is can be the, that, that's that can be another work arrangement that uh, uh, that can be considered. Many companies Maybe. now are, are are doing this uh, work from home, uh, depending on the nature of the job. Yes, yes. HR can be one. Accounting can yes. be one. You can yes. just report two days in a week. Then the rest of the uh, the, the two days will be working at, from home. Yes, uh, exactly. Uh, uh, this is uh, the intent of uh, this particular bill. Although there is already an approved bill that will allow you to work at home, depending on the nature of the job that you're the doing. The telecommuting act. The telecommuting yes, act. Telecommuting I know when you know that. Yes. But 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 how can we help as a, as a, as an HR as a one involved? How can we support your bill in Congress? Of course, we are not representatives. But how can we help? Shall we go there to to to, to rally to support you? What shall we do? Shall we write something or so that that bill can be pushed through? Well, uh, what we normally do when we discuss in the uh, committee level the bills that we have filed. Uh, we invite resource persons, and in many cases, uh, the People Management Association of the Philippines, ECHO, BCCI, uh, were invited to join in the hearing and they express their positions on various uh, bills that are presented uh, in the committee meeting. And uh, okay. I have seen uh, uh, several of our friends from PMAP. Uh, there was a time when... Uh, uh, past President Rico de Guzman, uh, we have yes, uh, yes, yes. Uh, Balisacan, uh, uh, Balsicas, Noel Balsicas, Balsicas. present. Uh, we have also uh, uh, past President, uh, uh, sino ba yung kasamang past President? And, you know, uh, we are present during these uh, committee meetings. But what okay. I intend to do here is, uh, you know, in addition to this, what I would like is to have an omnibus amendment of the... Yep. Uh, yes, yes. Of the, uh, then here, uh, we can have some uh, conversation uh, on this. Uh, and before we even submit this as a bill in Congress, we yes, can... Yes, you can uh, use this. The, you can use this platform. So let me ask you, among the provisions... Can you give us three or five things that you think there is a need to amend so that people will be in the know now who nga pala dapat amend yana? Aside from what yeah. we discussed earlier. We, we will look at uh, provisions as far as the conditions of employment are concerned. The yeah, conditions yeah. of uh, employment, this is very important. Uh, the This is uh, an important uh, issue that uh, I think we need to address because many issues are actually revolve around the conditions of employment. And this is provided for under Book 3 uh, of, the, uh, uh, of the Labor Code. No? 
Now, for for uh, those uh, who are watching, uh, 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 sorry for interrupting. For those who are listening to us now, ano kaya ang isang medyo dapat palitan na doon sa condition of work so that they will appreciate it. Oh, yun nga, ito. yung uh, bill na si, pinayal natin, yung Articles 83, 87, 91, no? these are uh, uh, the overtime pay. Uh, Ay, oo, oo, oo. Yun ganon. Tapos yung right to uh, weekly rest day. Uh, oo, 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 oo. What is provided for here is uh, you work eight hours a day uh, for six days. Uh, and after working for six days, you will have a rest day. Uh, so what we wanted here is you can have longer rest days uh, and longer work hours, tama. but shorter, shorter days. Tama, tama, tama. Oh. Sige na, dadali What else? What else, boss? That's aside from condition. Uh, well, the, one, the, the philosophy here, because this is more of a change in paradigm, the philosophy here, if you look at the basic uh, principles here, uh, of course, we would like to have a, you know, in, in the Department of Labor, they have different uh, undersecretaries. And uh, yes, what yes. we'd like to do is probably we need to have uh, an undersecretary that will focus on management. Instead For of each, yes. Yeah, 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 so yeah, this yeah. is one thing that uh, we are looking at. Uh, and uh, how do we, in terms of labor relations, uh, this is under uh, Book 5, how do we ensure that there is partnership between labor and management? Totoo. Kasi ang nangyari dito, based on our experience, there is always that, uh, I would say, parang hindi in, in, in uh, in friendly yung relationship. Eh. Lalo yes. na kung, adversarial. Uh, always no, adversarial. adversarial. Oh, so, ang gusto natin maging friendly yung relationship. That uh, the improvement of the performance of the company will redound to the benefit of... Uh, so, we, we talk about uh, doing success sharing as a program uh, under the right. you know, one of the provisions of this labor code. We will have programs uh, incorporated in the, uh, in the amendments. Uh, in, how do we increase productivity? And how do we share uh, the output as a result of the increase in productivity? Oh, na miss yan. Ay, yung wala yan sa labor code. Wala po yan yes. sa labor code. Eh. So, so, yun ang gusto nating isama rito. Uh, para masiguro natin na uh, uh, yung mga empleyado, once uh, they do, kasi they will always ask, what is it for me? So, what we want to do at the bigger beginning, uh, there is that mindset that you know, we are working for this company because this is this is our company, uh, and uh, the employer will always think of how to improve uh, the quality right. of life of the employees. And uh, the employees right. now should always think: How do we improve the productivity I in this company? That. I so love this that. is the kind of mindset that we would like to incorporate. Papa, uh, pardon my asking. Papa, no, mo yan may ilalagay doon sa no labor code that you're coming up that that one the last one the mindset of the employees that they are parang entrepreneurial parang they are parang they have the malasakit to the company paano po natin ilalagay well ang, ang pinaka ang pinaka importante rito yung uh, 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 yung statement of objectives the policy yeah. of the state. Oh, yes. Kasi nakalagay sa book 1 yan, yung principle natin na pre-employment. Under Article 12, nakas nakasadyan, ano ba ang statement of the objectives ng ating labor code? No, which is reflective of the policy of the state. Nakalagay dito, maliwanag naman dito, sabi, to promote and maintain a state of full employment through improved manpower training, allocation, and utilization. Gusto natin full employment eh. But we have not reached that level in our present condition. Yeah, oh, oh, oh. Wala oh, oh, tayong oh, oh. ganun eh. No? Uh, tapos, uh, uh, of course, nakalagay din dito, uh, ito yung mga prinsipyo na dapat nating is isa puso ng bawat uh, kumpanya, ng bawat uh, uh, manggagawa. No? Uh, kailangan maliwanag yung policy ng state 
it's not only to protect the rights of labor, but to ensure na kailangan eh, lagyan natin doon, there should be a honest to goodness partnership. So, isa, lagyan natin yan. I love that. that. I, I love I that. Principle. So, that is what is missing in the present labor code. Which yes, is actually not that. Which is the desire of PIMAP, the desire of PSTD, the desire of ECOP, nawawala talaga dun. Yung parabang the basis, our basis is that there's something I'm missing. There is a, there is a missing advice or a, a foundation. There's a missing foundation to what we are doing. Sige na po, dapat mangyari na po yan. Yes, o. Di ba tayo sa HR, uh, Nasa gitna tayo, we always balance the interests of the employer at saka yung employees. Right. We are right. also an employee of the company, but when we deal with our employees, we we represent management uh, uh, with the employees. So, kailangan natin balance yan eh. Nandun tayo para siguraduhin natin na uh, pinuprotektaan natin yung interest ng empleyado at the same time yung interest ng kumpanya. Uh, Paano natin ginagawa yan? Sinasabi natin sa mga employers o mga employees, pag ang kumpanya ay nagtagumpay, magandang performance, ang makikinabang hindi lang yung employers. Eh. Kasama na rito yung mga employees. So kailangan meron tayong mga polisiya na dapat ipapakita natin yun. No? Like uh, yun nga, yung success sharing program, sasama natin dito. Ano ba yung success sharing program? Pag ang kumpanya ay kumita, kailangan may share, hindi lamang ng sweldo at iba pang benepisyo yung mga uh, empleyado, no? kundi yung, yung pwedeng share mo yan, certain percent na tatanggapin ng... Ta right, mga right, Congressman. Yun know, mga years ago, I, I attended a, a, dole, a dole orientation on that. And that was just a pilot study by uh, then Director Alex Avila. Mm -hmm. Yung two-tiered mm -hmm. Pero after that, wala na nangyari. Siguro dapat ilagay talaga yan eh. Well, I am a from inquirer. We have that, yung profit share. Pero that's not actually found in the uh, labor code. I, by the way, uh, PP, Barbie at Jensa is watching us. Ay, Nan Barbie. Nanonood po. <laughs> Anong bago na yan po? Ano na siya, newscaster yan gabi-gabi sa, sa, Manila, sa Manila Bulletin. Sa Manila Bulletin, manon, pinapanood ko siya eh. Uh, ang ano, ang galing-galing niya magbigay. So, yon. Uh, by the way, na, na, may nawala tayong mga t, uh, TV newscasters. Ito, si Barbie. Si PP Barbie, nakikita po natin sa ano. Sige, uh, you, are, you, are, you are trying to say something po, uh, Congressman? Uh, well, yun nga. Uh, alam mo, si Barbie, idol ko yan. Napakagaling yan. Oh. I mean, <laughs> dati ka sa semiconductor uh, industry. Sa, siya ang dating personal manager ng uh, AMI, American Microsystems Inc. Okay. Okay. By the way, mapaiba po tayo. While, while listening to you kanina, parang nakikita, you are really an educator. You are more of an educator than a congressman when you e explain things. Now, let us go to education, but you are still very, very much engaged in that. So, paano po yung school natin transitioning into this new normal? Uh, ano po well, ang uh, Alam mo, meron akong bill na ipinail uh, providing uh, rehabilitation assistance package sa mga universities and colleges in the whole country. Because wow. the new normal after this pandemic, or even now, no, ang new normal ngayon, mahirap na yung face-to-face -face, uh, classes na gagawin natin. We cannot do what we have been doing before, that we come to, uh, this, to school and attend classes uh, just like what we have done before. Ang, ang kailangan nating i-leverage ngayon is uh, technology. No? Yes, uh, but yes, ang, yes. ang problema natin dito, ang ini, pinupus natin dito yung tinatawag nating flexible learning modality. No? Wow! Uh, Iba-ibang uh, uh, pamamaraan ng pagtuturo. No? And karamihan dito, we use technology, online learning. It can be uh, kagaya ng ginagawa natin ngayon. No? Uh, this is an effective way of conversing and at the same time sharing our thoughts to thousands of people around the country and even abroad because yes. this is the life yes. uh, 
you know, uh, coverage of uh, our conversation. So, ito yon. Ngayon, ang problema natin dito uh, sa educational sector, marami kasing mga estudyante na walang gadgets, walang tools. Right, right, so, right. So, ito right, yung right. isa sa mga gusto natin gawin, supportahin yung lahat ng mga uh, estudyante sa public and private universities and colleges na hindi kaya no, na magkaroon ng ganitong uh, Uh, mga gadgets na gagamitin sa ganitong online learning na sinasabi natin. So this is one uh, aspect no no. Pero before that, uh, ako rin ay nag-deliver uh, ng privilege speech tungkol sa relasyon ng labor at saka ng ng education. Alam mo oh, ba, na, 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 tell, natin, share with us. Ano po? Yeah, ano po marami yun? tayong problema sa education din eh, no? Even before this pandemic. Ano bang problema natin? Uh, one of, if you look at those who are, uh, I'm talking here of tertiary education and being the chair of the Committee on Tertiary and Technical Education, I have seen that uh, uh, yung, yung mga nag-graduate natin, no? ang mga nag-graduate natin sa tertiary level, ay nahirapan ng makakuha ng trabaho. Di ba? Marami. Right, right, There right. Is a, There is a gap, gap. Uh, between yes, a gap. or mismatch, if you may, between yung graduate natin in terms of the technical skills or competencies with that of the requirement of the industry. No? Yeah. Maraming It's actually manpower planning. Yes. Manpower planning po yan. Manpower planning yan. Eh. Yes, oh, pero may mismatch. Eh. Ang dami nating yeah. graduate every year, but all these people cannot find jobs. Not because there yeah. are no jobs. There are jobs that are available. But, ang problema, yung skills na na-develop nila and competencies sa kanilang pag-aaral ay hindi angkop no? yep. uh, doon sa pangailangan ng industriya. So, so, what is the bill for? Ang isang challenge sa education natin is how do we address this mismatch? And this is the thing that we are talking about in the Committee on Higher and Technical Education. And I met with Chairman uh, Popoy De Vera of the Commission on Higher and Technical Education. How do we ensure that yung mga graduates natin, no, pagka-graduate nila, hindi sila mahirapan ng makapagtrabaho. So kailangan merong partnership ngayon between the industries and the different educational institutions in the country. No? Isa yan. Pangalawa, so uh, mm, yes, yes. Oh, yun. Pangalawa naman dito, ang isang uh, one of our other issues is if you look at those graduates who are taking the board exam, no, bago sila mag-practice. Alam mo, only 40% of our graduates are passing the board exams after their graduation. No? Yes. Lawyers, yes. nurses, doctors, etc. No, teachers. No. So ang ibig sabihin ngan, if only 40% are passing board exams, uh, hindi sila pwedeng mag-practice kasi hindi nila napasa yung uh, uh, board exams. No? Mm -hmm. so, to think that pwede naman. Well, they can work uh, outside of what they pursued, no? di ba? Oh, Dapat oh. related yung ano mo eh. Oh, so oh, ano, oh. so tinitingnan natin ngayon, bakit ganon? May problema ba doon sa board exam? May problema yeah. ba sa kalidad ng edukasyon natin sa iba't ibang uh, universities? Yes, yes. Colleges? So, I like that. Natin para ma-address like natin itong, itong problema ng ito. Uh, Congressman, magbe... Yes, yes, yes. Sige, sige, sige. Continue po. Continue. Yeah, continue so, po. Ito yun. Uh, tapos, uh, para may strengthen natin ang ating mga universities and colleges, dapat, ang requirement kasi, if you teach in the universities and colleges, dapat meron kang master's degree o kaya may PhD ka bago ka makapagturo dapat. Ngayon, para ikaw ay maging regular na employee, dapat tapusin mo yan. No? Pwede ka pero kailangan matapos mo yan. So marami tayong mga nagtuturo sa kuleyo, uh, sa mga universities, but they have not completed their master's degree programs at saka yung PhD. Of course, it's not an assumption na pag wala ka niyan, hindi ka marunong magturo. No? Pero yun, kulang yun. Kailangan natin tulungan itong mga uh, 
uh, university teachers natin to pursue higher education so that they can deliver quality instruction. Yun, yun ang isang uh, nakita natin dun sa pinresent natin sa Congress. No? Uh, pangapat, sa yes. kumpara sa ibang bansa, yung mga dapat, there are three items that uh, universities and colleges should, should pursue when they operate. Number one is teaching, tapos yung susunod, research, yung pangatlo, extension services. No? May konting kailangan natin improvean yung teaching natin, also sa research. Yung mga research output natin should help us in our teaching. At the same time, yung research na gagawin natin should help the country. Kamukha nitong pandemic na ito, kailangan meron tayong magandang research sa iba't ibang university so that we can help itong pag-address nitong mga ganitong problema. If you compare oh, the number of researches of the country compared to other countries in Asia, eh napakalayo natin. No? Kasi Malibu. parang separate yung mindset sa research eh. Hindi na buo doon sa sa role niya. Yes. Para bang I am eh, just a teacher. Yan, eh. oh, makita oh. mo yung mga nagtuturo sa Harvard, sa Berkeley University. Uh, oh, they, they do Pinton. research. Oh, eh, sila mismo ang gumagawa ng libro. At yung libro nila is a result of their research. Right, yun, right, yun, ang, right. yun ang kailangan natin dito. Oh, That's that one needs a lot. Oh. That, so ito yan. That needs a lot of ano ha? Needs of uh, re -or reorienting, re uh, calibrating our mindsets. That needs a lot. Kasi it's actually a big leap from what we're doing now. Yes. Uh, okay. Yung namang uh, in relation to this, ano, yung ating K-12. No? Yes, yes, uh, yes. Ang, ang objective natin dyan, uh, those who will be pursuing yung university track, walang problema yon, Kasi they are delayed to go to college or university for two years. Ang assumption natin dito, if you take the tech book track, kailangan after finishing itong uh, uh, K-12 na ito, yung grades 11 and 12, and you take the vocational track, dapat dito you can be employed immediately after finishing yeah, the, uh, the yeah, grade 12 yeah. using the itong uh, tech book track. Pero maraming mga kumpanya na hindi nila tinatanggap o walang nag accept sa mga graduates ng tech book track because kasi ang, kulang. No? Kasi kulang. ang tingin, high school graduate pa rin. Ang yes, nakalagay sa qualification standard, dapat college graduate. So, hindi pa rin so, tinatanggap. So, kailangan may strengthen natin yon Kasi yung mga high schools natin uh, are not ready to train them using itong kasi kulang ng number of hours. Kasi kung misan, nag, nag uh, how do they call it? O, OJT sila for only how many hours? 40 hours? Yes, that's year. true. So, that's how true. would you learn uh, with that kind of... Uh, so, kailangan may strengthen yan. There should be a real partnership here between the industries at saka yung mga schools for those who are taking the tech book track. So that after finishing their uh, high school, uh, senior high, meron na silang natutunan na skills at automatic yan dapat tatanggapin na ng mga kumpanya. But, but you know, in practice, there are some BPOs who are already doing that. There is, yes. there is already a, a, a an agreement, an arrangement with schools wherein after they graduate, they are being trained on and then they are they are taken absorbed. by the uh, absorbed na. Pero that is just a practice now. So dapat it has to be legislated. Kasi may nakikita ko na there are far-flung regions wherein they still teach, say, journalism, they still teach some courses, wherein in fact it will not be needed in that region or in that area. Mm -hmm. Para bang, or there are, there are some regions naman na mayroong mga agricultural universities just like in Bicol wherein yung graduates naman niya wala namang pupuntahan so I think that uh, there should be some legislation on that on what we call uh, matching of of needs of the industries with one. Uh, Congressman, can we have a break? Uh, we'll have some few announcements then don't go away because we'll continue with our conversation okay, we'll have we'll...
is as one. Leave the pain behind. For the future is bright. Know that we are here. To help you rise again. The new channel. See the new. You are at TNC, the new channel, and this is HR Hotline, and I am your lunch date. We have the big picture with Lloyd Luna, MWF. We have the HR Hotline, that's me. We have business with Dr. Mike and Bert at TTH 830, and we have the fourth project. So that means that you really have to be tuned in with this, with TNC the whole day. We have the U-turn with Carmine, and then we have the, the home buyer with Dante Salamat. Oh, I, 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 I watched this, the puppet stories of Juan Lu, and then the TNC original, which is, and of course we have the world premiere that is coming on Wednesday, July 8th, at 7 p.m. Dubai time and 11 p.m. in the Philippines. A fourth project with, okay. So those are new things that is happening now and we are now in the new platform and I'm so glad because as, as mentioned by our Congressman Mark earlier, uh, we can use this. Uh, Congressman Mark, we, we, we discuss a lot on your uh, omnibus bill that is being uh, now at Congress and then your proposed uh, bills on, on tertiary education. I got here a, a post coming from uh, Femery Kabantak. We really have to see you because we, we would like to, to propose to you a talent development act. A talent development act. because I am the chairman now of the Philippine Society for Talent and Development. And last year, when Femery was president, we were able to come up with a framework which is the talent development framework. And we would like to share that with you and let us work on something that we can. It can be an act uh, very similar to some other countries wherein uh, there is a, a an agenda for the talent development. Okay, let us move on. So aside from that one on education and that one on the labor code. What else do you have pending in Congress? Well, uh, I have filed uh, for the last uh, 365 days. I have authored 40 bills. Wow. Four zero bill. And I've co-authored more than 50 bills uh, in Congress. Uh, and I what are these? I have bills on environment, uh, uh, two uh, bills on environment. One is uh, uh, an act uh, which requires that uh, for every child born to a parent, they should plant two trees. Of course, of course. Uh, I have a trees. garden. Uh, so uh, if you have a child, uh, you know, born, uh, let's say, Today, Today. Uh, you, before you have him or her registered before the local civil register's office, you have to plant two trees. The trees but you have to look for a place. You have to look for a place where you can plant the trees. 
Yes, the trees can be planted uh, in your backyard or uh, the Department of Environment and Natural Resources will identify the place and provide the seedlings. What you have to do is to, you know, to just uh, do the planting and ensure that these trees are are, are uh, nurtured and uh, grow. Uh, I think there is more of a sentimental uh, reason for this. You know, if a child is already five years, so that means you tree that you have planted is already five years. Five years also. So union. Uh, then for every graduate uh, in the senior high and college, they should also plant two trees so yes, that we yes. can plant uh, on the average here, uh, let's say the first one, because we have about 1,700,000 babies born every year in this country. So if we will follow this bill, uh, once it's approved into law, we will be able to plant 3.4 million trees a year. Yes, and there's that time that we read. Yes, yes, that's yes. wonderful. So, uh, in this bill, we have mandated the Department of Environment and Natural Resources and the Department of Agriculture to provide the seedlings. The seedlings okay. can be... Uh, fruit-bearing trees, uh, the, the other trees should be indigenous to the area. Okay. So this is okay. one uh, other bill that I filed in Congress. Uh, so okay. in that, uh, going, so back, in, going back to sa, sa human, sa human resource, which is labor, and then that one of education leading to, again, with, uh, the, with the arrangement or... Uh, matching, which one do you think is uh, urgent? And then tell us how can we help? Ano mas urgent po doon sa mga na-propose mo? Sa, sa education, I have another bill in education, uh, uh, Jesse. No? The other bill that I have in education is the creation of the Philippine Entrepreneurs Academy. Uy, kailangan yun. Kailangan uh -huh. yun. So, Kasi ngayon, uh, the mindset here is you study because you want to work for somebody else after graduation. Oh, oh we have to change that. So, uh, ito, this is another change in mindset. Uh, this is uh, uh, creating you know, a, a, an academy that will develop the entrepreneurial skills and competencies of people. So yes. ito yun. Uh, it's, so, it's called Philippine Entrepreneurs Academy. Uh, so this one is uh, related to labor and education. Uh, labor in a sense that uh, people will now look at their career. Uh, for those who probably are not uh, interested to become employees, they would like to become entrepreneurs. This is the degree program that they should take. And uh, this yeah. bill is, is, was already approved in the committee level of our... Uh, Congress, and it's now in the Committee on Appropriation. What we will do here is we will identify uh, students who have potential uh, skills uh, in, you know, in, in, in relation to uh, entrepreneurship. And the government yes. will provide the support uh, to these students so that we can develop uh, entrepreneurial leaders uh, of, uh, and the, uh, students who can become business people, uh, and really, you know, uh, develop our our country in terms of uh, uh, putting up companies and businesses uh, instead of simply, you know, becoming uh, employees for other companies. Tama yun, a congressman, kasi right now, watching us is Vic Alquas. Vic Alquas, who owns a cafe in Go besides uh, Santo Domingo, and a consultant on HR. Yung, hindi yung human resource, ha? hotel and restaurant. Di ba ang daming nagtatapos na hotel and restaurant? But the mindset is that they have become waiters, they become uh, 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 dyan sa mga hotel, di ba? Room boys. Siguro, I love that your proposal kasi para bang we have to teach them yung entrepreneurial side. Diba yung, ang dami yung chef, they own restaurants na. 
ano kaya itong yung dito kasi si Bit nga is with uh, human uh, hotel and restaurant yung lahat ng mga uh, 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 schools natin on tourism on hotel and restaurant pwede nga tama po yung sinasabi nyo we identify mm -hmm. students and then help them become entrepreneurs and that can yes. be the course that is nice that is yes. nice yeah in the bill that I have uh, filed, uh, we will put up one in Clark. Oh, good, good, good. And this will be financed by the government. And we will identify in the various parts of the country who are really people who have the potentials uh, and uh, who are interested to become entrepreneurs. Uh, we'll identify the top uh, graduates of the various high schools in the country and place them in a training uh, or in a in an educational program geared towards enhancing or developing their uh, entrepreneurial skills so that okay. when they graduate they become industry leaders who will develop new businesses for the country okay okay uh, honorable congressman nakon one hour na po tayong nag-uusap so before we end, can we ask you to give your uh, message, your remark? And of course, thank you very much for being my special guest. Sa second season, iimbitaw rin po ulit namin kayo. But can you give us your uh, uh, message before you say goodbye? Yeah, well, first of all, I would like to thank you, uh, Jesse, for uh, inviting me uh, in this program. Thank you. Uh, I am uh, indeed uh, very encouraged and I'm very happy that you have uh, uh, developed or introduced this uh, program. Uh, kala ko kanina, ANC yan eh, TNC pala, o kaya CNN. <laughs> you know, one of these days, for all you know, you can uh, put up one like that. Uh, and uh, uh, this is, uh, you know, an important thing that you have developed, uh, especially for our HR practitioners. And I live with a message to our practitioners, HR practitioners, that, you know, as I mentioned in several locations, uh, the respect and trust of people in different organizations, even your bosses, are something that we have to earn as HR practitioners. They are not given free. And so that you can develop the respect and trust of people, as you said earlier, uh, Jesse, kailangan... Uh, confident tayo na alam natin yung uh, uh, itong ating ginagalawan. No? Alam natin yung mga batas, alam natin yung mga nakakabuti para sa ating mga empleyado at sa kumpanya. And uh, before we can even uh, you know implement this, there is a need to know all these uh, laws, policies, if you may. And so that when people come to us and ask questions, we can easily answer them. Uh, and at the same time, we should be a party in ensuring that uh, we implement this uh, for the good of the company and for the good of the employees. So again, this is a bigger challenge for all of us as uh, HR practitioners. And I hope that this representation in Congress can contribute uh, a little uh, in ensuring that uh, we can improve our country and our uh, people uh, in the various industries in in this country. So again, uh, thank you very much, uh, uh, Jesse, and uh, those Welcome people uh, kasama mo dyan, sina Lloyd, and uh, yes. who is the other lady? Apple, Apple Manansala. Apple. Uh, yeah, uh, so again, thank you very much. At, uh, thank you, boy, We will continuously uh, watch your program. Uh, salamat po, salamat po. Maraming salamat, at uh, mabuhay tayo lahat. Thank you. Okay. Be safe po dyan sa Baguio. Be safe. Oh, yan Thank po, you. ladies and gentlemen. And that is actually what HR Hotline would like us to be. Let's have a community. For this episode, we are assured, I am assured, and it assures us that we have a representation in Congress. And nakita po natin how, how open, how ang mabait Diba? Yung pwedeng, yung, I, I cannot find the right word now. Yung mad, madali siyang makausap. Diba? So, yun nga sabi nga ni, ni Femery, let's talk to him. 
And then, let's have representation. Yung sinabi niya po, napaka-importante. As an HR person, we have to be aware. We have to be appraised of what is happening. So that even with us, yung sinabi niya, confident po tayo na yung hindi ka rin, I cannot understand, we have to look for an attorney, a lawyer to help us. You have to know what is behind the law. And you have also to appreciate that there is, there are efforts that hindi, hindi naman yung, yung nahuli at nawawala, yun, we get it. It is being taken care of. And you know, ako mismo, while listening to uh, the Honorable Congressman, kay Mark, Congressman Mark Ro, I was assured, I was assured na may, may, may ano, may magandang future po ang HR dito sa Pilipinas. Kung nakita niyo po, mayroon, mayroon lang sasabihin. Give me a minute. Lahat siya nagsasabi. Teka muna, nag, nag, nag-jujuit sa akin yung aking pet dito sa loob. May sinabi siya pong importante. It's about mind setting. It's about changing ang ating paradigms. Importante po yun. Kasi with that, di ba, we are always moving forward. Di ba? So dapat may isip po natin niya na, yes, we have a representation in Congress and we must appreciate that everything is properly taken care of. So now we started with compliance, compliance with the law. For us to be able to comply with the law, we must be able to understand the spirit behind the law and why it is being filed or being discussed in Congress. So with that, just marvelous po, send